Chubby Chubby Joe, let's go! It's time for Maths with Mr. Thomas. Chapter 13, lesson number 4. This is the review lesson for the Euclidean algorithm chapter. Fairly short chapter, and all I'm going to do here is go over all the key points that we learned. It does not go over anything in great detail, and it doesn't look at every slide and every example, so if you want that, look back to the individual lessons. This is just the key points to make sure there is nothing that you have forgotten. So we started off looking at number bases. 4,376 is written in base 10, which means we can express the four thousand as four times a thousand and a thousand you could write as ten to the power of three with a three hundred again you can write the hundred as ten to the power of two with the seventy you can write that as seven times ten which is ten to the power of one and with a six you could write that six times ten to the power of zero so you can see everything every number every part has a times ten to the power of something really what that means is it's written in base 10 which is also known as the decimal system what we can do though is we have to be able to change from one base to another so if we wrote the 4376 base 10 in base 12 we would end up with this number here the 2648 and what that would mean is you would have an 8 times 12 to the power of 0, you'd have a 4 times 12 to the power of 1, a 6 times 12 to the power of 2, and a 2 times 12 to the power of 3. But it's not obvious about how you get that. So what do you use? The division algorithm! Perfectly right! Well done, Sandy! So, to do that, all you want to do is if you have a number in base 10, if you want to write it in base 6, you take that number and you divide by 6. What you will then do is you will take whatever answer that is and you will divide that by 6 as well. Notice when you divide it, you will end up with a remainder. It's the remainders that are important. So if you divide that by 6, again, you will get an answer with a remainder. If you divide the 31 by 6, you're getting an answer with a remainder. Divide that answer by 6, again, you get an answer with a remainder. So the remainders that are important, they're what you want to look at, which means... For the answer to 1136 base 10, if you write it in base 6, all you do is you take the remainders and go from the bottom to the top. So that will be the 5, 1, 3, 2 base 6. We had to write this one here in binary. What's binary? Well, binary is when it's written in base 2. So to write something in base 2, because that is in base 10, we're just going to work our way through and keep dividing by 2. So 27 divided by 2 gives you an answer remainder 1. Take the 13, divide that by 2, you get an answer remainder 1. Take the 6 divided by 2, just keep working your way along until you would end up with 0 remainder something. Once again, all you want to do is you want to look at these remainders, go from the bottom to the top, bottom to the top, and you will end up with the 1, the 1, the 0, 1, 1, which means then if you write 27 in base 2, you will have the 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, and you put this wee 2 to show it is written in base 2. Note as well, when you do write numbers in binary, it will consist of just 1s and zeros. With this one here, just look out for something like this. Express the 2213 base 4 in base 5. Why is this one different? Because it's not in base 10. Perfectly right, it is not written in base 10. First of all, it's written in base 4. Oh no! Don't worry. All you want to do is you want to write it in base 10. So taking this number, I normally start with the right hand side. What this means is, because it's in base 4, it means you would have 3 times 4 to the power of 0. You would have a 1 times 4 to the power of 1. You've got a 2 times 4 to the power of 2. And you've got a 2 times 4 to the power of 3. Note how the indices, you would have a 0, then a 1, then a 2, then a 3. You would just work your way up. All you want to do then is just work out what that is. So work out 4 cubed, double it, and you get 128. 4 squared, multiply that by 2 is 32. That's obviously 4, that's obviously 3. Uh, which means you would get 107. 67. That is going to be base 10. Because the number is now in base 10, woo you can use the division algorithm. So if we want to express in base 5, all we do is we take this 167 and divide it by 5. Again, you will get an answer and a remainder. Take the 33 and divide that by 5, you will get an answer and a remainder. Take the 6 and divide that by 5, you get an answer and a remainder. 
Take the one, divide that by five. Because you've got zero, that's where you stop. So it's going to be zero, and then you've got a remainder of one. Again, all you're doing is you're taking these remainders, and from the bottom to the top, you've got a one, a one, a three, and a two. So your answer will be the one, one, three, two, and that will be base five. After that, we went on to the second lesson, which starts off with the actual Euclidean algorithm. What's that all about? Well, it's used to find the greatest common divisor or the highest common factor of two numbers. What I'm saying here is that you can easily find the highest common factor or greatest common divisor of, for example, 12 and 30, because you just list your factors of 12, list the factors of 30, and then the highest number that appears in both sets is 6. So that's the highest common factor. But... What do you do when the numbers are a lot bigger? Instead of 12 and 30, what if you had 165? And instead of 30, what if you had 315? What you can do is you can use the Euclidean algorithm to work that out. Note as well, this notation is used to denote the greatest common divisor. So an example with this, if you're wanting to work out the greatest common divisor of 140 and 252, take the larger number, the 252, and express that in terms of the smaller number, the 140. So you'll say 252 equals 140 times, and then work out how many 140s fit into the 252. It's obviously one, and you would have your remainder. What you then do is you take the 140 and you express that in terms of the remainder. So you'll say 140 equals 112 times something. Again, work out what the something is. Here in this case, again, it's just one. You will again have your remainder of 28. Now you're taking the 112 and you're writing that in terms of the remainder. So 112 is going to be the same as 28 times something. Well, for that, it's 4 times 28 and there wouldn't be a remainder. You'd have your remainder of 0. Because the remainder is now 0, the greatest common divisor is the last non-zero remainder. So you've got a remainder of 0, 28, 112. The last remainder that wasn't 0 was 28. So that there will be the greatest common divisor. The way you write it then, with the brackets, you've got the two numbers, 140 and 252. Put brackets around them, comma between them, and that would equal... 28. That means the greatest common divisor of these two numbers is 28. Woo! With this example here, find the greatest common divisor of the 280 and the 117. You're just doing the same thing. Start with the larger number and write it in terms of the smaller number. How many 117s can you fit into 280? Well, you can fit in two and you would have your remainder. Next, take the 117 and write that in terms of the remainder. So 117 will be 46 times what? Well, that's going to be times two and you'd have a remainder of 25. Do the same thing again, just take the 46, write it in terms of the remainder. So it's 46 is going to be the same as 25 times what? Well, that's just going to be times 1, and you'd have the remainder of 21. Take the 25, write that in terms of 21, and again, you're going to have a remainder. After that, with the 21, write that in terms of the remainder. So 21 equals 4 times something plus another remainder. You just want to keep working your way down here. And then from there, you're going to have four in terms of one. So four is going to be one times four. And then your remainder is zero. Because your remainder is zero, it means you stop. And the greatest common divisor, once again, is going to be the last non-zero remainder. So all of these are your remainders. And the last one that wasn't zero was one. So you can say the greatest common divisor is one. Note here, if you do end up with the greatest common divisor as 1, then it means your integers A and B, the two numbers that you're finding the greatest divisor of, are co-prime or relatively prime. And we finished off this chapter expressing the greatest common divisor in terms of A and B. So with these examples, what we were doing was a lot of the time we had, first of all, had to work out what the greatest common divisor was. It says here, use the Euclidean algorithm to show that the greatest common divisor is 1. And then we had to find integers x and y such that 149x plus 139y equals 1. So we're taking these two numbers and we're wanting to express the greatest common divisor in terms of these two numbers. To start with, all we did was just what we did in the last lesson. We're wanting to show the greatest common divisor is 1, so we take the larger number, write it in terms of the smaller number. Take the remainder, take that smaller number, 
and write the 139 in terms of 10. So that'll be 10 times 13, and again, you've got a remainder. Then you're going to express 10 in terms of the 9, so 10 is going to be 9 times 1, and again, you've got your remainder. Then you will have the 9, and 9 is going to be in terms of 1. Well, 9 is going to be 1 times 9 plus 0. Because the remainder is 0, you stop. The greatest common divisor is the last non-zero remainder. And the last remainder that wasn't zero is one. So that is us proving that. Notice here when I'm working through one of these problems, because there is this part B when you've got to do this bit, what I'm doing is I'm writing that this is line one, line two, line three, and line four. Because for the next bit, you repeatedly substitute expressions for the remainders in line three, two, and one. The way you do this is you want to take that greatest common divisor, which is 1, and you use what you had just on the last page. You want to rewrite 1 in terms of these parts here. So you will say that 1 is equal to, well, if you take away 9 times 1 from both sides, you can say 1 is going to be equal to 10 take away 9 times 1. You can work that out just in your head to double check that works. What you then do is you go up a line and you take this remainder. So now you want to replace any 9s that you have with... 139 take away 10 times 13. So we've still got 10 take away, but we're replacing the 9. Well, the times by 1, you don't really need. You can forget about that. It's just 10 take away 9 and replace the 9 with 139 take away 10 times 13. Once you do that, multiply the brackets. So negative 1 times 139 is take away the 139. And negative 1 times the negative 10 would make plus 10 times 113. Notice you've got 10 13s and then you've got another 10, or you've got 13 tens rather, and then another 10. So which means then, if you've got 13 tens, then you add another 10, you've got 14 tens. So gather any like terms together. So you've got 14 tens, and then you're still taking away the 139. After that, go up a line to 10, and now you want to replace the tens with what that would be equal to if you rearrange this. So you can replace this 10 with the 149 take away 139 times 1 because it's times by one, I'm just forgetting that. So it's 149 take away 139, that's what 10 is equal to. You know you'd multiply that by 14, so it's in brackets, multiplied by 14, and then we're taking away that 139. Multiply the brackets here, so it's 14 times 149. It's the 14 times that 139, just make sure you do put in the take away there, and we're still taking away this 139, that's not changing. Notice we are taking away 14 139s, and we're taking away another 139s, which means, really, we're taking away 15 139s. So, you can simplify that and say you've got the 14 times the 149, and we're taking away 15 lots of the 139. Now we've got that down to the stage of 149 times something, and 139 times something, well, we can see it's equal to 1, this greatest common divisor. All we want to do is just tidy it up a bit, make it a bit clearer. We want 149x, so 149 times something, well, we're, we're, what we're multiplying it by, well, we're multiplying it by 14, so the x has to be 14. Here is 139y, well, we're multiplying the 139 by this negative 15. So the negative 15 there is going to be what y is equal to. And that is you then expressing that in terms of those two numbers, the 139 and the 149, and just saying what those two values would be for x and y. That is it for the Euclidean algorithm. If you want more examples, if you want to get in more detail, a bit slower pace, look back to the individual lessons. If you're happy with that, woo, well done, high five. Go you. See ya.